Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India last few lectures we have discussed linearized flow over two dimensional bodies planar bodies and bodies of revolution and we have noticed particularly where we have obtained the explicit analytic solution as in case of subsonic and supersonic flow over wavy wall and supersonic flow over cone. We have noticed that the pressure coefficient can be arranged in a special functional group, so that <coughs> a single curve represents the solution for a whole family of shape as well as a range of Mach numbers. Particularly, we may recall we may recall for supersonic flow over slender cylinder cone slender cones we had C p by delta square is function of delta root over m infinity square minus 1. In particular for slender cone this function is explicitly known which is <coughs> log of 2 by delta root over m infinity square minus 1. However, we can see that this can be arranged in these two functional groups one is C p by delta square the other is delta into root over m infinity square 1. And for all slender cones if C p by delta square is plotted against delta by root over m infinity square 1 along the x axis and this along the y axis we will have a single curve representing all slender cones and covering a range of Mach numbers. <coughs> Similarly, for wavy shaped wall, for wave shaped wall, we had C p and if we combine both subsonic and supersonic flow by this or alpha h or if we recall that h was the amplitude of the wave and alpha was the wave number becomes a function of alpha x alpha root over m in or sorry We are taking this modular sign so that this applies for both subsonic and supersonic flow combined. Once again, we have seen that <coughs> we have been able to arrange the parameters in certain functional groups so that a single curve represents solution for a whole family of shapes over a range of Mach numbers. In this case, the pressure coefficient over the body, and as you know, that body that means, this quantity remain fixed. If this parameter this modified pressure coefficient parameter is plotted against this modified x coordinate we will have a single curve for all wave shaped wall having different amplitude different wave numbers 
and different free stream Mach number. So, a single solution serves the purpose for all possible such cases. So, these are the similarity rules or similarity relations. So, similarity relations are obtaining some sort of relations or arranging the parameters involved in certain functional groups, so that we can reduce the total number of parameters involved in the problem. Of course, these parameters are in terms of modified flow parameters and modified geometric parameters. Now, in this case of course, the solutions are explicitly known to us and we have been able to obtain these similarity relations for from known relations. However, in many cases the solutions are not obtainable particularly for nonlinearized problems as in transonic flow, where even for the simplest geometry the solution is extremely difficult. So, whenever such a situation arises where solution cannot be obtained straightforward manner or a very simple manner, these similarity relations may prove highly useful. However, in cases where explicit solutions in the closed form is available, even then similarity relations provide certain insight into the problem. And of course, when less number of parameters are involved, it is much easier to see the importance of one parameter over the others. <coughs> However, it may be remembered that when in a linear problem where we can obtain solution for some basic problem, we can use the principle of superposition to obtain solution for other problems. and the similarity relation or a special rule to derive similarity relations are not that useful. However, they serve the essential purpose that how to obtain similarity relations for problems where such solutions are not straight away available. Similarity relations can also be obtained from experimental data and to be precise in many cases similarity relations are originally obtained from experimental data. Now, since the basic purpose of the similarity rules is to reduce the number of variables or number of parameters involved by arranging them in some functional groups, similarity rules or similarity transformations can also be used to obtain solution or simplify the solution of many problems. One such famous example is the Blasius solution of boundary layer, which we have discussed in earlier aerodynamics courses, where we know that a specially tailored stream function is defined and a modified normal, normal coordinate, which depends on both the coordinates y and x as well as Reynolds number, is obtained, and in terms of these parameters the boundary layer equations become instead of a become from a become ordinary differential equation instead of the original partial differential equation. Of course, they still remain nonlinear. <coughs> so, <coughs> the basic purpose of similarity rules is to get some functional grouping of the parameters involved, so that number of parameters involved are reduced. Now, <coughs> from dimensional analysis we know or we can say from dimensional analysis
you can say that the pressure coefficient or the pressure distribution on an airfoil will be function of the flow speed in terms of Mach number, it will be function of the gas gamma and of course, the coordinates x by c and t by c and of course, if necessary angle of attack. <coughs> Alpha in this case is angle of attack, it is no longer the wave number. the alpha in this relation is wave number which was 2 pi by L where L is the wavelength of the well wall. <coughs> now, it may appear that even dimensional analysis and similarity rules are basically the same that here also we have arranged a certain the parameters in some non dimensional group. However, the similarity rules are much more than dimensional analysis. In dimensional analysis, we have arranged certain parameters in dimensionless group, where basically these parameters or the variables involved are obtained from guess or from other knowledge and then just based on a dimensional analysis they are arranged. It, it may so happen that if our original guesses were some extraneous, then we will be getting some extraneous groups which may not have any influence in the practical case. <coughs> the similarity relations is not exactly a dimensional analysis, similarity analysis now try to group these parameters itself in certain functional group, so that we can reduce the number of variables like in this case even including this angle of attack we have 6 parameters involved. So, the aim of the similarity rules will be to <coughs> group these 6 parameters or few of them in certain functional groups. So, that those functional parameters that are involved finally, are considerably less than this number 6 with the aim that if it is possible to have a single curve representing say the pressure coefficient by a single relationship. <laughs> that is can we group all these parameters, so that the modified pressure coefficient parameter at a given modified station or at given modified x by c be represented by a single curve for all Mach numbers, for all gases, for a family of set. If this can be done, then the purpose of the similarity rule is achieved. And as you have mentioned that forming similarity rules for linearized problem is quite simple and straightforward because we have explicit solution for some problems and from which we can draw the general form of the similarity rule and since any other problem are basically superposition of these simple problems, the similarity rules can be extended without much analysis. However, the most important use of similarity rules are for nonlinear problems as in case of transonic flow, where solution or in analytic form is not available easily. So, that if we can frame a similarity rule, so that if we know the solution for one particular transonic flow or for one particular foil in one particular gas, we may be able to obtain the solution for other air foils in other gas at other Mach number in transonic Mach number. Now, <coughs> as you mentioned that this non dimensional grouping or the is done by dimensional analysis in which 
we need to guess only the parameters which might be involved or which might be responsible in a given problem. Then it is just a method of just a measure of the well known Buckingham pi theorem by which we can arrange certain number of non dimensional groups and we can very easily obtain those non dimensional groups by <laughs> simple processes. The similarity rules need much more than that. To obtain similarity rules, we need to have as we have shown here that explicit solutions or when explicit solutions are not available, maybe the governing equation and the differential and the boundary conditions or even maybe the experimental measurements, which gives a complete description of the problem. <coughs> so, the governing partial differential equations and boundary conditions are essential to obtain these similarity rules or of course, an experimental solution or experimental measurement can sometimes be used to frame similarity rules. Now, in the present context we will mostly try to obtain similarity rules in the form that we have already shown that is a modified pressure coefficient or pressure distribution in terms of a modified geometry or modified some parameter representing the geometric shape. <coughs> so, first we will see the similarity rule for two dimensional linearized flow. We have seen that we have already mentioned that constructing similarity rules for linearized problems is straightforward and no special analysis is really necessary. However, we will do the steps so that they can be used when you go for transonic flow problem. So, first to show the steps or how the similarity rule is formed so that a modified pressure coefficient is obtained in terms of a modified geometric parameter, the steps involved we will discuss with the help of similarity rules for two dimensional linearized flow problems. So, the first we will consider similarity rules for 2 D linearized flow. <coughs> say let us say that phi x y is perturbation potential for a 2 D linear for a steady 2 D linearized flow flow at free stream Mach number of m 1. Remember that phi we are treating as the perturbation potential not the full potential that is the gradient of phi gives only the perturbation velocity not the total velocity. So, the undisturbed potential or the free stream potential is to be added with this to obtain the total potential. Anyway, since phi x is the perturbation potential then phi x y must satisfy or let us call it phi 1 
phi 1 plus 1 by 1 minus m 1 square d 2 phi 1 d y square equal to 0. So, phi satisfies this boundary condition phi x 1 phi 1 also satisfies the appropriate boundary condition phi 1 also satisfies the appropriate boundary condition also satisfies the appropriate linearized boundary condition Now, let us consider these bodies let the body shape be y equal to t 1 function of x by c. Or T1 is the maximum thickness ratio, maximum thickness of body. And if we non dimensionalize this side also, we have y by c equal to tau 1 f x by c. So, tau 1 equal to t 1 by c the thickness ratio. We know the air folds are usually characterized or described by their thickness ratio. So, we have this body shape also in terms of the thickness ratio. C is of course, the chord <coughs> Now, the boundary condition the linearized boundary condition states that that the perturbation normal component of the perturbation velocity on the body surface which can be approximated to be the y equal to 0 is u 1 d y d x on the body surface. u 1 is the free stream speed corresponding to m 1. u 1 is the speed corresponding to m 1. That is the free stream speed and <coughs> from this, this can be written as u 1 of 1 function of x by c. <coughs> so, phi phi 1 satisfies this relation as well. Now, we know the pressure coefficient pressure coefficient on the boundary or on the body. C p you know as minus 2 u y equal to 0 by 
u 1 in this case. So, this becomes minus 2 by u 1 d phi 1 d x on y equal to 0. <coughs> now, consider the second function. Consider a function phi to data eta in xi eta system xi <coughs> eta system related to this phi 1 x y as a u 1 by u 2 phi 2 xi eta a u 1 by u 2 phi 2 x root over 1 minus m 1 square by 1 minus m 2 square into y. is an unknown constant constant and we have this transformation j equal to x and it equal to root over 1 minus m 1 square by 1 minus m 2 square into y. <coughs> now, let us substitute this phi 2 in the linearized differential equation. Put phi 2 in the linearized governing equation <coughs> and if we do that, we see that d square 2 d j square plus 1 by 1 minus m 2 square d 2 phi 2 d eta square equal to 0. <coughs> that is phi 2 satisfies the linearized governing equation for a flow at free stream Mach number m 2. That is phi 2 satisfies the linearized flow equation for undisturbed stream at undisturbed 
for undisturbed stream at M2 in Jaita system. <coughs> now, is phi a solution then over a certain body? Okay, phi satisfies this governing equation, but we know that if a function is to be considered as a valid potential flow solution over a certain body, then it must also satisfy the boundary condition, appropriate boundary condition. So, does this phi 2 satisfy the appropriate boundary condition for over a certain body at system m, m 2 and let us check that. <coughs> what happens to this d phi 1 d y at y equal to 0. We can express this phi 1 in terms of phi 2 to show that this becomes a u 1 by u 2 root over 1 minus m 1 square by 1 minus m 2 square into d phi 2 d eta at eta equal to 0. And however, we know that d phi 1 d y at y equal to 0 is u 1 tau 1 prime x by c <coughs> and hence this gives g phi to u 2 tau 1 f prime this x of course, we can replace by j u 2 tau 2, <coughs> where a root 1 minus m 2 square by 1 minus m 1 square into tau 1 <coughs> we see then that phi 2 satisfies the governing equation for a undisturbed stream at m 2 corresponding to speed u 2 and also satisfies the boundary condition in the form of u 2 tau 2 f prime j by c which is exactly the same form as in the earlier case for flow over body of same shape because this is the same f. So, phi 2 satisfies the boundary condition for bodies of same shape at free stream speed of u 2 with thickness t o 2. So, phi 2 
satisfies the boundary condition over a body of same shape, but with thickness tau 2. when the undisturbed stream velocity is u 2 or in terms of Mach number m 2. <coughs> so, we see again that <coughs> if phi 1 is a solution of the linearized equation corresponding to an undisturbed strip of m 1 over a body of a given shape with thickness ratio tau 1. Then this phi 2 is also a solution of same linearized equation that is of a similar linearized flow at undisturbed stream of m 2 of similar shape of body, but with different thickness and where the two thicknesses are related by this. <coughs> so, we see that we are getting some sort of similarity that if we have a certain shape of body and we know the solution over, over it, then in the j eta which is basically a transformed geometry we get the solution over a transform geometry, but of the same shape with different thickness from the known first solution. <coughs> so, this also shows that bodies of same family can be compared. geometric shape of same family can be compared. That is an, is an example, if we are considering a NASA 4 digit air falls <coughs> in SCA followed by 4 digits they can be compared because they belong to the same family, but they cannot be compared with any <coughs> supercritical error faults or any error faults of 6 series. <coughs> now, the considered now the pressure coefficient. Consider the pressure coefficient. Because as you have said, said earlier that we want to express our similar similarity rules in terms of the pressure coefficient. Now, for the first flow that is phi 1 at m 1 over the body of thickness tau 1 or pressure coefficient C p 1 is minus 2 by u 1 d phi 1 d x at y equal to 0. If we substitute <coughs> this, this then become minus 2 by u 2 into a d phi 2 d j at 
eta equal to 0. <coughs> now, the pressure coefficient on on the second flow or over the second body is simply minus 2 by u 2 d phi 2 d xi eta equal to 0. So, comparing these what we are getting is C p 1 equal to A C p 2 <coughs> or we can think that A is A 1 by A 2 and we can write it as C p 1 by A 1 equal to C p 2 by A 2. If a equal to sorry if if a equal to a one by a two we have <coughs> so what we are getting that two members of a particular family of shape which are characterized by their thickness ratios tau 1 and tau 2 will have same pressure distribution given by the coefficient C p 1 and C p 2 if the Mach number of the flows are m 1 and m 2 then we have C p 2 equal to a C p C p 1 equal to a C p 2 or C p 1 by A 1 equal to C p 2 by A 2, if we express A in terms of A 1 by A 2. <coughs> you can write it explicitly that two members of A family of shapes with thickness ratios tau 1 and tau 2 we have pressure distributions pressure distributions given by C p 1 and C p 2 such that C p 1 equal to A C p 2. If tau 1 and tau 2 satisfy the particular relationship, if tau 1 equal to A into root over 1 minus m 1 square by 1 minus m 2 square tau 2. <coughs> <coughs> this in the of course, it is not 
mentioned here explicitly that if the first member is at a free stream Mach number of m 1 and the second member is at free stream Mach number m 2. First member at free stream m 1 and the sec and second member second member at m 2. <coughs> now, these relation we can combine as C p by a, if we combine these relations C p by a is function of tau by a root 1 minus m infinity square. <coughs> we are going back to the standard notation of m infinity as free stream Mach number instead of two different free stream m 1 and m 2. Now, a we have never not been able to find a or rather we have seen that a is arbitrary whatever the whatever the choice for a is it is valid. So, a is arbitrary. a is arbitrary. We can choose anything for A and all the relationships remain valid. <coughs> and this is because that the governing equation is homogeneous in phi and see if we multiply the equation by any constant or multiply phi by any arbitrary constant the equation remain unchanged. since the linearized equation is homogeneous. <coughs> Consequently, if we multiply phi by any arbitrary constant that also satisfies the equation. <coughs> so, this constant remains arbitrary. <coughs> now, we can have different choices for different rules and there are few particular choices which are quite popular. <coughs> so, we have A can be chosen arbitrarily and different choices are give different rules. There are few very popular choices. Which includes Prandtl Glott rule and 
go that rule <coughs> and we will mention these rules. <coughs> Say choose a equal to one. What we get is C P is function of tau by root over one minus m infinity square. <coughs> This is of course, a obvious choice that a equal to 1. Now, so a equal to 1 by root over 1 minus m infinity square This gives C p is one by root over one minus m infinity square into function of tau. <coughs> or choose a equal to tau. this gives C p equal to tau into function of root over 1 minus m infinity square. <coughs> all three are known as parental glot rules, all three of these are known as parental glot rules and a fourth choice. So, let us say the choice we number as 1, 2, 3 and a fourth choice we make which is a equal to 1 by 1 minus m infinity square which gives us C p 1 by 1 minus m infinity square into function of which is called the Gothard rule. <coughs> we will subsequently try to see what is the meaning of these rules and what these rules particularly say and how are they important or why are they important. <coughs> but before going to this, we should mention that in this analysis, we have implicitly assumed a sub subsonic flow. If we have taken a supersonic flow, where one of the term in the governing equation or the term representing that y derivative would have been negative 1 by 1 minus m infinity square would have been replaced by 1 by m infinity square minus 1 making the sign of that term negative. However, as far as these similarity rules are concerned we, we could see that nothing, nothing would have been changed. So, if we make this parameter sign independent then the rule applies to subsonic and linearized subsonic and supersonic flow. So, the rules applies to applies to linearized subsonic and supersonic flows
suppose if 1 by root over 1 minus m infinity square is replaced by 1 by root over 1 minus m infinity square. So, we can straight away replace those parental glot rules and Gothard rule by this replacement and the rule that we obtain they are valid for both subsonic and supersonic flow as long as they belong to linearized case that is of course, they are not valid in the transonic range. So, not valid in transonic range and also not valid hypersonic range. That is because we have already discussed that in both these cases the governing equations no longer remain no linear, they become non linear. So, this analysis is not valid in neither of these cases and <coughs> <coughs> of course, then it implies that accuracy of all these rules, accuracy of all these rules decreases. So, rules becomes less accurate less accurate as the transonic range is approached. So, we will close here and discuss about these or implications of these parental glot rules and Gothard rule in, in our next lecture and also we will try to get other similarity rules. <coughs>